Hey everybody, it's Margaret. Welcome to my channel, Texas Gal Treasures. In today's video, we're going to do a Q&A. I get a lot of questions on the channel and in emails and on Facebook, and I don't always have time to answer everyone directly, unfortunately. Um, but I thought, let's tackle some of the questions in a video today. That would be nice. So that's what I'm doing. And now I'm looking to make sure I'm on the right channel because this always ends up happening. Nice. I can guess myself. Anyway. All right. Let's uh, dive into this. So yeah, I get a lot of questions and I, I wish I could answer all of them personally, but I'm a busy lady. I know everybody's busy, but this is life. <laughs> so just as in the reality, this is why I decided let's do this. Plus I get a chance to hang out with you. So if you're watching now, hi, I am live. So I will answer questions that come up live in the chat as well. If you're watching later, then leave a comment. Just say, hey, I was here. Nice to see you. Okay, so let me pop up the first question. And I know there's a better way to do this now, but this is just the way I have it. Okay, so first question um, is from Janie, and she says, what word do you use to find the jewelry? This is on a thread up. I tried jewelry reject and nothing came up. So I do get this question a lot. That's why I chose this one. So let me show you. I'm going to do a screen share over here. That's the wrong screen though. Okay. So when you got a thread up, um, the site thread up at the top up here, you'll see all these different categories. And then way over at the end, it says rescue. So if you click on rescue, it will show you all the different rescue boxes that they have available at the time. So right now you can see this mixed jewelry is unavailable, but they take things down and put things up periodically as they have them. So sometimes it'll be the the other jewelry box, but uh, it's not there right now. So that uh, is where you find the jewelry rescue on, yeah on thread up my brain just went like that okay let's see in the chat hello everybody and i did see a question where did they go i lost it hello hello ah dev says have you incorporated managed payments yet i have i'm hoping that it'll be be a good fit for me well we'll see it, yeah i i had it on my last one of the last what was it it was like do you want to go ahead and pay for this now or take it out of your I can't think of what the word is. Cash of money that they have there, you know, from your payments instead of getting it paid out. I don't know. We'll see how it works. I think it'll be fine because that's how it's done on Etsy and I'm used to that. So Etsy basically takes the fees and stuff out of that. So I'm used to it on that site. So, um, ah, Jason. Uh, says, I visited several local Goodwills lately. They don't have the, the quality doesn't seem to be that great. Do you notice a drop in quality during the pandemic? I have not been thrifting since like February or March. We, we started quarantining in mid-March. And so I've heard it's been pretty good though. But the Goodwills in my area are not amazing. There's a couple. But when I was in Houston, they were way better. So I don't know, maybe people either aren't donating to Goodwill right now, or maybe they're donating somewhere else. I don't know. So, okay, next question. Hi, everybody. Hey, Neville, long time to see. Uh, let's see if I can get this going again. Screen share. I have a better way to do it next time, y'all, but I just didn't realize it until now. Okay, I got this que this question a couple different ways. Um, but Austin's asking, how long did it take for you for to make 2000 a month? Going all in, two months, can you give me any tips? Uh, I don't make 2000 a month, just as a starter. I usually, it'd be nice, some months maybe I do, but mm, I aim for between 800 and, unless you're talking about not eBay. Um, I don't know. Uh, but at this point, I make between 800 and 1000 sometimes a little bit more on eBay, Etsy, Poshmark, and Mercari per month. That's what I aim for. And it didn't take me too long when I first started to start getting about $200 a month. I think it's a pretty reasonable goal um, to get more than that. If you're trying to get $2,000 a month, then you'd aim more for like 500 
net. And I would, you would just have to work harder than me <laughs> and list more. Definitely, you know, maybe focus on higher ticket item things. Um, so I'm sure there will be wonderful comments too. So if you guys have tips for that as well, getting started, getting it ramped up quickly to so try to make two, 2000 a month, leave a comment. You know, I know getting feedback can be really important. So that's definitely something you can't see it when it's that tiny. Mm, I'm going to do it better next time. I'll do better next time. Ah, uh, yeah. Dallas uh, City Vintage says, I had a buyer yesterday that wanted me to text them about an item. I denied their offer and did not contact and thoughts. I'm glad you mentioned that because I did have a question that's going to come up in a bit about, about scammers. And I, how, first also Dallas, let me know how long you've been selling. Like what's your shop's like? Just out of curiosity, I'm curious because I don't get those kinds of messages or, and so I wonder if they target people that have shops that maybe don't, that aren't as established. I could be totally wrong. I'm just hypothesizing here. We've had Science Friday in my house. So I'm gonna use fancy science words. Anyway, um, yeah, so I don't get, but yeah, those are red flags. I mean, I think if somebody asks you to contact them off of site, first of all, it's against eBay's terms of service. Don't do it. Just avoid it like the plague, you know? And my thing is like anything that makes you pause and like, is that right? I would just avoid it. I, I don't, like I said, I, I, I maybe in all the years I've been doing eBay, maybe have been scammed once. And I even hesitate at that. So uh, let's see. Okay, I'll come back to that in a second. Um, so I don't know if that's it or not. But yeah, anytime you feel funny about a, sh um, a sale or it doesn't seem quite right, I would, if you're not 100% sure, ask in a group, like if you're in a Facebook group, you know, I have International League of Thrifters or in, in my jewelry group. And just to, to see like, hey guys, this is giving me like raising some red flags. What are your thoughts? Yeah. 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 Dallas, yeah, I barely started. So they target me for sure. I think too, because I have, you know, my shop has been around a while. I have, you know, so much feedback. So I think they know like, Oh, these people have been around. They'll, they'll know. Right. Okay. Let me get back. Let's see. I saw some other questions before I go back to my other ones. Doopy doop. Hi Saturn girl. I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. I'm not, I'm not in my full regalia today, but that's all right. It's been kind of, we have ups and downs, you know. Okay, let's see. Pamela Love says, you talk about accepting best offer. I use it on eBay frequently. Is there a best offer feature on Etsy? I think there is a way to send people offers if they're following or watching an item on Etsy. I can't remember now uh, how to do it. I have to go play around with it. I'm not super active on doing stuff like that. I do it on eBay because they make it super easy. I think there's a way to do it on Etsy. I can't think of what it is right now. <laughs> or I would have pulled it up and had it ready for us to look at. Good, good uh, question though. Uh, any tips for selling vintage sheets? I would find really cool ones, ones that are in fairly good shape. I mean, however, people will buy if it's a cool enough topic. Yeah. And sometimes it's a waiting game because somebody's going to be waiting for that particular, you might have to wait for your buyer, depending on what it is. So I've enjoyed selling vintage sheets for, for sure. They're fun to look at. They're fun to buy. <laughs> Thank you, Marilyn. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> nice segue. Susan says, do you have a video about how to estimate shipping where you get your supplies? I'm intimidated. I do. Let me, let me screen share again. Let's see. New screen share. I had this other page popped up on purpose. So on my, that's not the right one. That's not the right one. Well, maybe it is. How do I do? Here we go. So on my, if you go to my like main part of my Facebook page, not Facebook, YouTube, and you see along here, there's all these little like tabs. If you go to this little arrow, there's a search button. And then if you type in shipping, there'll be some videos. It'll narrow down like where I get my supplies and oh, you can't see it. Uh, how I, some of them are older and you guys know how I ramble now. It used to be worse. So just <laughs> letting you know in advance. 
And if there's anything that like, if maybe I need to make a uh, updated video, then, then I can totally do that too. So that's that um, as far as that goes. And I was thinking about doing some more shipping videos. I've been getting some more questions lately as far as that goes. Let's see. Oh, okay. At what point, price point, would you recommend taking your fine to an appraiser rather than just guesstimating a price when there's no comps? Probably when it gets into the thousands. Other than that, like I have this little German bear that I've had listed. I've had it listed for a while, but I couldn't find anything like it. So I think I have it listed for like almost 800 bucks because I'm just like, it's so cool. And he's got mittens and shorts. <laughs> I don't know. So, uh, yeah, probably it'd have to be something like I have that ruby ring that I think might be a Burmese ruby. I'm, you know, holding on to that until I can get it appraised. But it, I've had some people ask me about it and I'm like, I will sell it to you for $5,000 if you really want it that bad because I could use $5,000. But until I get it appraised, it could be more. It could be if it's a Burmese ruby, it could be way more. If it's not, it could be worth a thousand bucks. I don't know, 500, 800, I don't know. It's super cool. So that's my, that's my strategy. Let's see. Marilyn says, how many listings do you have on eBay? I have, a, it's usually average right around 500. It's dropped recently because I have sold some things. So it's like 490 something right now. I haven't listed in a little bit. That's something I need to work on. Oh, welcome to, yeah. Uh, uh, my jewelry isn't moving. Do I offer store reviews? I used to, and I feel like at this point, um, here's which, here's an option. <laughs> I, if you're a member of the channel, my, I, ha I have a, let me go ahead and show you that. So I have channel membership. I used to do store reviews. Let me, let me back it up a second. And I used to do like, um, I don't want to call it coaching or anything, but like if somebody wanted a one-on-one, -on -one, like I would do, okay, like 25 bucks or something like that. And for an hour we would sit and talk, we would go over whatever the person felt like they wanted to improve on. And I liked it. However, it's hard for me because I'm a single mom now and I'm, I homeschool my kids. And so time is super crunched for me. It's really hard for me to get life, anything else, life in. Um, so I started the join button on the channel and the one of the levels, where did I go? Um, one of the levels is a 20, it's the $25 level. I do on two of the levels do tip videos and tutorial videos every month. Um, and then on the, the diamond level, they make you, they make you I can't scroll it. I can't scroll it. Anyway, they make you name the levels. And so they're always so cheesy sounding. But anyway, um, so that one we're meeting once a month and we've finally set a specific time. So for that level, there's a small group of us that are meeting live once a month, like kind of like a Zoom type of deal. And um, then it's all, all open. We've been looking at each other's shops, giving tips, you know, assign assignments. This is what you're working on for next time, you know? And so that's been kind of nice. It's been, a, it's been a nice motivating for everybody, including myself. So that's kind of what, um, that's what I'm not kind of what I've been doing. That's what I've been doing because it's been challenging just as far as time. So Saturn girl says, I don't have much listed and nothing is sold in a month or more is because I don't have much up possibly. I, tr I recommend trying to get at least the first page if like say on Etsy or if you, yeah, I mean at least like 20 plus items, 25 plus items, maybe more just to make sure it looks like you've got a full shop. And then especially when you're starting out, like listing consistently is going to be really important. I have so much up right now that I think that's why sometimes I'm like, I don't need to list today. I'm, I don't have time. I'm too busy. It's not, it's not a good, practice to be in. I just, I'm going to say, uh, let see. I skipped. Okay. Okay. Oh, Sierra. <laughs> Me too. 
<laughs> Keep missing the good roll blue boxes to sell out so fast. Anyone have any luck tips? It has been so long. And man, I like I wasn't there today. I didn't get on there today. But did you did you get the emails? The email from Goodwill Blue Box today was like, maybe they won't sell out this time. Wink, wink. Um, yeah, I got oh, I got there late. I got there at like 502. And yeah, they were sold out. <laughs> so usually you have to be there like 459. I'm in central time, so my time is different. And like refresh, refresh, refresh. Still, I don't get them. So yeah, it's super hard <laughs> to get those. Hmm, let's see. Oh yay, Clarissa. I think yours was one of the questions that I that I would have unless you're asking the same question as somebody else. I have that question queued up. Hello, hello. That's your close by. Okay, started listening as a hobby, teenage daughter. How long did it take your shop to kick off? Um not super well, I started on Etsy, I'm just gonna say. But I think it'd probably be even faster on eBay, truly. It didn't take super long. However, when I first started, I did list items for not as much money. I did sell things that were less expensive. And I think it kind of helped. My shop looked a mess. My pictures were horrible. My listings were terrible. I made so many mistakes. It's cringeworthy. But I did sell a lot of lower end, lower ticket items like I would find um, vintage children's books like little golden books and I would sell them for like five to seven dollars and it was you know not a huge not a, barely any profit on them but what it did was get sales in my store and they were super easy to ship I mean they were little books right they weren't anything that was going to be a, a had a hassle or a headache and it got my store kind of a, a little bit established. You know, I got a few, I got some feedback. I got some, you know, sales in my store. And so while it's not, I mean, nobody, that's not necessarily ideal in the long run. You know, might you might think about getting some things that are going to be sell, selling quicker that you can start smaller. And I don't know. That's, I mean, that's what I did. So and it wasn't even on purpose, truly, because at first I was like, these are so fun. I just love these books. But um, yeah, that's how I started. Do, 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 do. Um, okay, I know there's a, hi, Brenda. <laughs> Speak of the group. There we are. Hello, I'm doing well. Thank you. How long did it take me to sell my first item? Maybe a couple weeks. Maybe a couple weeks. But I'm surprised because my shop is a mess. It was horrible. So <laughs> truly. But it, it, you know, those first few sales, you just start getting excited. And then um, do I set a specific time of day for listening? I need to do a day in my life. It, however, it changes every day. But we get up. Here, I'm going to do a quick run through of my day. I get up between 6 and 8 o'clock. In that window, just depends on how late we stay up, the kids and myself. I get up and my my first thing I do is I make coffee and I go outside and sit and read on my porch swing and drink coffee or talk to my sister, one or the other. Then we do school. We get up, do we do chores, we do school. It doesn't happen until later in the day. Let me just put it that way. So not until like the three-ish do I end up getting work time? Like probably from three to five. Look, today we're, we're way off. I had a rough day, I'm just gonna say. And then usually I'll, tr I'll try listing or doing some work after the kids go to bed. But lately that hasn't been happening because we've been staying up later. We've been reading or doing puzzles or just emotionally being there for each other kind of deal. Um. So it's tough, but I have talked to the kids like, we're going to have to figure this out because I think during, usually when they're doing their schoolwork, I'm right there with them. But I told them I'm going to have to be doing other things because I just can't juggle everything. I'm going to have to be listing or doing something else when you guys are schooling as well. <clears throat> but we just still be there. I'm like, I'm here if you have questions. So unless it's something we're obviously doing together. It's, Yeah. It's juggling. It's a juggling. Is there any way to get visits? I just opened my shop. Mm, I don't know. And I don't know. I'm not even sure that that would. 
Well, there are, you know, in some groups they do like social media share things like, you know, um, Pinterest threads or, you know, if somebody wants to share on Twitter, then that gets some movement in the group, I, I, in your shop, that is, you know, pinning items and stuff like that. So there's that, yeah. Um, what are your sale percentages on each plot? Ooh. Um, percentage wise, I don't know the exact numbers, but usually eBay does pretty <clears throat> pretty well for me. It usually is the top one. However, in Q4, Etsy picks up the pace a lot, I think because people are looking for gift items there. So it's like Mercari and Poshmark are like 1%. <laughs> and then Etsy and eBay are like 70, 29 or something like that. Sometimes 64, 39. Can't forget that other 1%. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> I have some lots that are not selling too right now. So any tips when I put together craft damage jewelry lots? I've never made one before. I finally have to start. Yeah, the prices do vary. I have some up that just sometimes they sell fast and sometimes they just sit there forever. And I swore to myself I wasn't going to like make them look pretty. And then what did I, or like, you know, put them all, make them all take the time for that. And I did that. And they just are sitting there now. <laughs> They're not in my eBay store, though. They're in, I have a group called Texas Gals Jewelry Lovers, or tre Treasure Traders, that you can sell stuff in. <clears throat> Pardon. So, but yeah, they're just sitting there. <laughs> um, okay. okay, do you know a place where I can learn how to format shipping labels for Mercari, Etsy, Dima? Oh, I don't know. I don't, I mean, I guess go I would Google it. I don't know that one because I don't have a Dymo. And I don't know. I have issues with Poshmark shipping, but <laughs> yeah. Okay. Ah, it jumped. Sorry. I am going back. Um. Hang on. No, you're not late. I saw. I saw late to the. Do 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 do. It totally jumped. There we go. I found it. I found it. So. Oh, good. Marilyn says, "Just gotta say, really motivated the past." Oh, this. Yeah, we met. Um last was last week it feels like all the days meld together um i met our goal each day bypassed it yay i'm so glad <laughs> i'm so glad brenda says i'm on the dime level definitely right oh thank you i'm so glad i you know and i i want to make sure that that i'm helping out you know meeting the needs you got a, a blue box yay tess congratulations not not late at all i do have more questions that i have pulled aside but i want to make sure i get through all the Make sure nobody else here has a question before I do that. Thank you, Brenda. Yes, hit the like button, everybody. Um, Deb Elliott, I was going to attempt to get a blue box and reality set in. I don't need any more jewelry. I have piles to list. Need? There are needs and there are wants. I guess need. Okay, if you don't need it, you don't need it. <laughs> No, no, I just, yeah, I'm, I know it's been 23 minutes, but no, I'm good. We're still here. Do I have one platform you list on that seems dead? How to draw in more sales? Yes, Poshmark. <laughs> I think because I just, I list everything over there that I can, and I don't do all the sharing and caring. I don't have time for it. So that's probably why I don't get as many sales on Poshmark. And I think people are looking for certain things when they go there. I know when I was, I bought some dresses off Poshmark a couple months ago, last month. I don't even remember days. And yeah, I was looking, for, you know, sending offers and sending, trying to get things for, for cheaper. And it was like, okay, I, I probably bought six dresses, but I sent probably 12 offers. And we're just like, if they take it, they take it. If they don't, cool, that's fine. So I think that's just maybe the... I can't think of the word. This is me thinking of the word. That's just the way the site is, I think. <laughs> yeah, I normally have, I was having a hard time listing one day, but I would have listed, oh good, oh yay. I was motivated to list 20 items, yay, that's awesome. I need to do it. I need to get back. Maybe tonight. <laughs> Barbara says, does jewelry have to be vintage to list it on Etsy? Yes and no. 
yes, if you're listing it like I have this, I have this beautiful little bug, it's vintage that I'm listing. But <clears throat> let's say you've got some jewelry that's broken, but it's not vintage, then you can list it as supplies. <clears throat> so I have craft lots. I don't know if I have any up right now. Maybe I do. Um, that are not vintage, but because somebody might use them to create something else, they can be sold there. Now, if you're just selling it like I have this bracelet and it's not vintage, no, you can't. That one might be vintage though. So, <laughs> yeah, talk about too much jewelry. I have jewelry everywhere. So, next up. Yeah, Jason says, I started selling my childhood items. I started selling a lot of my grandmother's stuff um, after she passed away, and she had tons and tons of things. So that's that's where I started, too. So nostalgia definitely sells. All right. Oh, yay, thank you. <laughs> okay, no action. Let's see. I have several mixed boxes of vintage necklaces on eBay. No action for over a month. Thinking of selling them individually. They sold really well in person at a bead and jewelry show. Tips. Yeah. I mean, if they, it might be something that you could look at doing it that way. It depends on, I guess, the price. Um, another option is if you're wanting to sell, sell like a big box, you might think about selling it in Texas Gals Treasure Traders or just you can share the listing over there, the eBay listing, and just say, you know, just to get more eyes on it. And a lot of times people over there are looking for lots that they can bust apart and sell if you don't feel like doing that yourself. So um okay, here we go. Don't okay. I don't have a store yet. I'm currently buying and selling on the same eBay account. Should I set up a store? I'm not I'm at 100%. I really want to separate the two. Is it bad to do? I'm kind of new. Mm. Everybody has their own opinions about this. Some people never set up a store. I have a store. I feel like once you get to the point when you're paying for listings, then it's time to move up to the next level. I mean, you're paying because you're paying the subscription fee, but you get more perks and, and – um, yeah, there's more perks. Anyway, as far as getting shipping supplies or getting um, ah fees, the fee, I, I can't think with words today, peeps. My peeps, I can't think with the words today. Okay, <laughs> maybe this was not the day to answer questions. Uh, let's see, I would love to know how you have your items organized so that you can find them easily when you made a sale. I have a video for that. So if you go to, let's see if I can pull it up again. There we go. Um, that's the wrong one. Organize. I hear feet. Hi, feet. What's that? I am live. That's cool. What's going on, Shugs? Yes. Oh, 10 minutes. Okay. Not online though. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Welcome to life. So yeah, here we go. Inventory storage is probably the most recent one. Yeah. Four months ago. And uh, that's, that's how I've got my stuff organized. Definitely. Um, I uh, jumped again. Sorry y'all. Okay. Doo -doo -doo. I am going back in to the Ah, have you seen the DreamWork Troll giggle and sing Poppy Doll Recall? Oh, nice. I recall, recalled selling, okay, recalled selling for lots. But I just can't, I found three and took them to customer service. I'm confused. So you got, you have some of the doll and you want to take them back? Recalled selling. Just can't. I found three and took them to customer service. Oh, cause yeah, I heard that they were being recalled because of the unfortunate belly button placement. <laughs> I never looked to see what the unfortunate. I'm guessing I can figure out what the unfortunate belly button placement would be. But yeah. <laughs> uh, 
I am guessing I, yeah. <laughs> Let's see, okay, I'm scrolling through. Oh, I'm so glad, Patty. I, 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 um, I hate not talking when I'm scrolling because you can't see what I'm doing. Uh, let's see. What's the best gem tester for testing loose and mounted gemstones and diamonds as well? I see the Presidium 11 that is square. And the one that, the one I have, the one I like, I think I may even have it linked down below. The one I use is the Presidium gem tester 2. And it looks like a little like box and it has like a pen looking thing that is on like a cord. That's the one I use. I like it. I like it a lot. So, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, I'm getting close to the end of this and then I'll go back to my other questions. Got Goodwill box yesterday, 26. Oh, you know, some people um, list single earring lots. So you might consider doing a single earring lot. Yeah. Uh, or uh, as Susan says, sometimes you can convert them into pendants, definitely. Yep. Some people buy individual like solo earrings, definitely. All right. Uh-oh. No, no sorries for asking twice if you missed it, if I missed it. Okay. Next, let me get back to my other questions for y'all. Let me get, and again, I'm going to do it better next time so that you can see it better. Okay. Uh, Michelle asked, what does O-O-A-K mean? That means one of a kind. We were doing a, a video uh, to get high amounts. For, okay, Bobby was asking. I'm trying to zoom it so you can see it better. Again, to get the high marks for the mugs, this was in the mug video of when I was giving tips about selling mugs. Do you put them on auction rather than buy it now? Or if so, do you check completed sales? I only sell on eBay. I sold a, a Starbucks mug with a sauce, a long burger travel mug, but did not get the, the amounts noted in some of the comments. I do buy it now. Of course, that thing's going to go beeping right now. I do buy it now. I don't always go off of sold prices when I list things. Um, if I think it's pretty unique, then I'll list it pretty high and wait for a good buyer um, or wait for the, the buyer, put a best offer on it. I don't, I don't do um, auctions. Very, very rarely will I do an auction on an item. That's just personal preference though. Yeah. Well, let's see. Uh, like uh, says, how do you price your stuff based off the comps? No, I usually I I do a Google search, and then I will. I, I feel like I talked talk, talk about this every week. Sorry, if this is re repetition for some of you. Uh, I go off of like I'll do a Google search, and then I can pull up the shopping there and see what my item or similars are are up for across multiple platforms. And then, you know, I do look at the sold prices on eBay, but I don't use that as my like be all end all. I, you, you know, I just kind of go off of a col uh, conglomerate. I get all the prices and I smush them together. And then I put a price that I think fits, especially if it's something really cool. Yeah. Uh, Paul says, have you ever bought a part of a set of something expecting and hoping to complete the set in the future? Yes. Oh, you can't see that. That's really small. Um, yes. One thing that I'm still collecting, is I do this for book series. So on my bookshelf downstairs, I've got a number of like Harry Potter. So I had somebody come over months ago, clearly, but um, and say, why do you have so many copies of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. How, why do you have so many copies of the Like, because I'm trying to make the set. I already have a set for myself. But once I make a new set, then they'll sell. I can sell them online. So, yeah, especially with books and book series, I do that. Because um, there are quite a few that are people like and they want to get. So, oh, I forgot to pull up a, a thing for this. Um, Carissa was asking about Brutalist style on the necklaces. And so I was going to show like, yeah, this is a, a style of jewelry that's like kind of hammered and like the metal is mm, formed rough. It looks like pretty rough. I'll have to pull up a, a I'll have to re redo that question later, I guess. <laughs> oh, okay. I get this question a lot. 
So how do I get in touch with you if I want to buy something I saw today? So yeah, it, if you see something in my one of the whole videos, whether jewelry or whatever that you want to buy, send me an email because sometimes it gets lost in Facebook. It goes to, I can't find it anyway. <laughs> so send me an email and then, and then we can work out a price. Then Katie says, oh yeah, okay. Can you do a video about how I come up with listing titles? And also, how do you know what that item is when you get, okay, on unique pieces. Ah, I made it too small. Sorry again, guys. So when I have unique pieces, if I don't know what it is, um, I just type into the search, like as many descriptors as I can. Um, also, I'll share it in a group to ask people like, what is this? Especially I'm that green, like amplifying phone thing. I had no idea what that thing was. But as far as creating titles, I have many videos for that. I think I did one recently too. Hang on, let me pull it up. So again, if you go to my, my page over here, and then when you go to the search up at the top, if you go over here in the little search button, and you put, um, I don't know, eBay title, and then search that, then they'll be like live, how to create a eBay listing or how I research titles, depending on what you're after. So again, some of these videos are older than others, so I may ramble more than, more than you're used to because I did that more. So I clicked the wrong button. Talk about incomplete vintage board games with missing pieces can still bring in good money. Absolutely. Totally. Yes. Um, totally, totally. Okay. I have another question over here. Again, I will do this better next time. We're living and learning, right? All of us. Ah, again, how do you ship, how do you ship the accordion rack? Okay. Remember how I just showed you like how to look up the video? I have a video for how to do that. But basically, like I use the pay, the the box, the priority mailbox, not this one, but the one that's for shoes, the shoe box one, and I Franken box it. I cut one in half, and then I tape it to the other one like that, and then it fits in there. If it's a big long one, usually if they're smaller, the one of them will fit into the shoe box. So that is how I ship those. Deborah says, "Oh, can you tell me?" Uh, if you sold the gate top opening bag, how much? I have one and would love to show you. I did, and I pulled it up to show you. Here we go. <laughs> Here it goes. I keep having to flip back and forth, but that's okay. That's okay. Here it is. So this is the purse she was talking about, and the, it's got this gate top opening where it looks like that, and then the it's got this kind of like accordion opening. I sold it for $40, and there are ones that are – up for way, way more, or have sold for way more, but mine was in rough shape. I got it at the bins, but it sold for $40. I mean, bad shape and all, so yeah, you can totally, totally make the money. Do I prefer eBay or Etsy? Ooh, I like them both for different reasons. <laughs> I like Etsy a lot. It's just, it's just easy for me. I've never had, like, customer service issues or Ever, I'm gonna knock on lots of wood now, but truly, I mean, I can't think of any a time that I've had an issue with a buyer on Etsy. Um, but other than that, yeah, pretty. But I like that I make more sa a lot of sales on eBay, so <laughs> that's that's always good too. The money, the money. Next, I know I had more questions than this. There we go. Okay, we did this one, Claire. So, look, I told you, I had, it, I had it ready. Okay, oh, here we go. Sorry, Zach, if you're here, but I have got a question about your question. What, <laughs> Honey, I love you, love in your videos, but, okay, so you know how they say, like, anything before but is nothing. Can we diversify a bit? I love mugs and a lot of other breakable items. I've actually gotten into pickup jewelry before. This was a comment on a jewelry video. And I just want to point out that I have been doing way more than just jewelry videos lately. It was a comment on my last jewelry video. I don't know. I've been doing all kinds of things. And I've got a whole whole wealth of other videos to watch as well. But I appreciate you watching. I'll say that much. So 
I don't know. Um, uh, Mill says, hi, me again. When just starting, how many listings should you have at first? Oh, we kind of covered that. I would try to get in the first page of your shop filled up. Yeah, or 20 plus, just keep. Okay, Randall says, how do I how do I contact you? I bought some jewelry, I need help with it. So this is again, I get, and I feel really super bad about this. I do get a lot of messages and emails about people saying like, here's my shop and you know, here, or sending me pictures of stuff. Hey, you know, what's your opinion about this? Or what should I list? I don't always respond. And, and I don't not respond to be mean, um, but because I don't have time. And so, so I, and I, I feel really bad because I do appreciate, I do appreciate the sentiment that someone would reach out to me for help, but I do not always have time to respond. So I don't. So I'm sorry. <laughs> Truly. Oh, yay. Nancy became a member of the channel. Oh, wait, we got to, we got to give, where's some stickers? How, how about some fun? Where's a good one? Here we go. Yay. Thank you. Thank you for that. I'm glad that you became a member. Okay. I hate it when guys call me honey. Right? It's very um, demeaning. All right, I'm not your honey. I get it. Yeah, totally. That I don't, oh, never mind. Dating. Well, you know, I that's a whole nother. <laughs> I'm not on any dating sites now, but when I was for a brief moment, like if a guy starts with, hey, beautiful, I don't even respond. Or like, hey, sweetheart. I'm like, mm -hmm. we're not, not going to be a match. So. Uh, uh, let's see. I want to start selling. Do I need a business name? I don't think so. Cause you can start as a sole proprietor and just being yourself like under your name. If you want, you can, but you don't have to. Okay. Next question. Uh Oh, do I hit the wrong button? I had to stream. There we go. Honey. Oh gosh. Yeah. Oh, this is a fun one. <laughs> Tammy's asking, so I wanted to say first, your face is looking slim. Didn't you say you were on a diet? I believe you've lost weight. I have been. So this is something that I have. It's been not quite a month yet, but I've been on this journey, this journey for self-improvement, not just with my weight, but with everything. And so I started the new channel is called my mate Margaret. I've talked about it a little bit where I am working on my, you know, myself and I have changed my diet to a, a whole food plant-based diet. And it's been about not quite a month yet. So I've been popping on talking about my journey and the reason I did it and the one I had to do it is because there were, when I look for channels that were like real, like weight, not, not even necessarily weight loss, a lot of people that have lost a lot of weight, they don't start their channel till they're already looking amazing, you know? And I was like, I want to see the nitty gritty, like the down and dirty, like day to day. It's a, you know, it's a long process and it's really for me it, it's discouraging when I'm like okay yeah but you look great now what I want to see was the struggle getting there because yeah it's hard for me <clears throat> and so I did I started the channel just so I could be the change you want to see in the world I don't know <laughs> put it out there so um let's see See, Margaret, uh, you may not have time to help people, but you have set up. Yeah, I do have the Jewelry Lovers page. That's true. Um, they can definitely go there. Okay, so that's my my other channel that I, I was going to tell you. I may have told you. I also have a homeschool channel. So when I talk about, like, I'm a busy lady, I have, uh, yeah, I have a homeschool channel that I do stuff. And I have my channel where I'm tracking my, my journey, becoming whole food plant-based. I was doing keto for a while but it was hard for me to stick to it. And so I've been reading more about actually trying to get more healthy, not just lose weight. So there's that. Ah, I, let me put this back up here. I'm trying to get the raw, the other one back up. Pardon. 
that was like the personal part, you know, because I do, I share pictures and we talk about poo. I don't know. <laughs> Everything. All the things. Uh, okay. So late question, audiobooks sold. This was from my last sales update. Um, she wanted to know if I, if I sold it for best offer. Yeah, I, I don't, yeah, again, I don't do auctions. I already answered kind of, I already answered that. We talked about scammers already. I probably won't make a video about it because it changes. Is there, okay, L, wrong, I'm gonna say it long, wrong. Uh, is there a way to tell if sold items were auction or straight sales? Yes, let me show you. So, and this is kind of, I mean, it's a new, a lot of new people might need this but it's always a good refresher. So let's say you want to come over here on eBay and you're looking for a Presto pressure cooker. <laughs> Guess what I was searching for the other day. Uh, and you want to see like, oh, I've got one to sell. So you scroll down and you want to see how what they sold for, you know, lately. So you click sold down here. Can you see that? Make sure I'm on the right thing. Then when this pops up, if you want to see like, if it was auction or um, buy it now. So like over off to the side, this one says condition. So you can choose new or used. Like, oh, I have a used one. How much is that? Or if you want to see if it was an auction or buy it now, then you can narrow your search over here. Is it showing you all that on there? Let me see. Ah, I clicked the wrong button. Sorry, again. So yeah, over off to the side over here, you can narrow the search to find out find out that okay next I wanted to know whether oh no no you don't yeah I misunderstood your question yeah you can you can test ones that are not mounted I'm pretty sure I've got um, a gem that I need to test that's not mounted so we can do that someday where did I put it it's here somewhere <laughs> my friend gave it to me um, yeah, I'll double check that for you. But I'm pretty sure you can test ones that are not mounted. Okay, back to the other questions. Here we go. I know you're not the last one, or are you? Hang on. I gotta pop this back out. Thumbnails. Oh, it is. Oh boy. Okay. So let's see if there's any other questions. Why do I have other things pulled up though? I thought I pulled up just what I needed. Oh, well, maybe I didn't. Okay, yeah, so I hope that you enjoyed this Q&A. Go down there and leave a thumbs up, friends. And if you have any other questions, or if you disagree with any of my answers, then leave a comment, and then everyone can go down there. And I had somebody make a comment about, I heard Margaret fart on her videos, and I just realized it because I did it again. I'm sitting, listen, are you hearing these noises? That is not me farting on command. Okay, <laughs> that's not what's going on there. What's going on is my computer is sitting at this table and there's a window right there. And my feet are propped up on the windowsill. And so when I move my feet on the windowsill, it makes squeaky farting noises. <laughs> so somebody made a comment about me farting in the videos and I would own it if I did it, first of all. And secondly, that's what's going on with those noises. <laughs> anyway, well, maybe we should end it there. Um, <laughs> anytime. Uh, okay, so I, um, I hope you guys have a great weekend. I will be back tomorrow with a hard goods haul is what the plan is. Is that what's tomorrow? I think so. I have a list. I made a list. Okay. I will talk to you on the next one. Thanks for coming to hang out, everybody. My foot again. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Bye.